Hi, my name is Patrick McAvina, and welcome to my presentation, Procedural Modeling for Grid-Based Games. Really excited to share with everyone today some uh, really uh, pretty straightforward and simple techniques but that are super powerful that um, we used on our game Dota Peak um, in Houdini to generate some level assets for our uh, grid-based games. So before I get into it here, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about myself and the, and the project. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of Moving Pieces Interactive, which is a small independent game studio in New York City. We've been around for about a year so far. And our first and current project is called Dota Peak, which is a grid-based isometric platformer. Um, it's very similar to Frogger meets Qbert. Um, takes place on this kind of... Uh, tropical world and your goal is to save uh, save dodos from extinction um, but the important part here is the the way that the movement system works which is very much like Qbert um, for those that are familiar with it which um, is sort of a grid-based uh, um, movement system um, so Dota Peak is currently out on Apple Arcade uh, we released it back in last fall and then we're coming out on Nintendo Switch this summer and then before uh, working in games I spent about a decade working as a 3D artist on TV and commercials. And to give you a little more um, context about me as a Houdini user, um, I'm actually pretty new to Houdini. So I think one of the cool parts about this whole um, technique that I'm going to walk you guys through is that it's a super accessible technique, but it's really powerful. And those of you that um, are thinking about maybe using Houdini for your first project, I think this is a really, really good um, technique to, to potentially learn about and start with, um, as this is the, the first project that I ever used Houdini on. Um, it was actually really straightforward and, uh, and easy to get into um, for our purposes. So just a little more context there. Um, I wanted to show you guys a little gameplay trailer of Dota Peak to kind of show you a little bit more about uh, the grid-based movement system that I was referring to. All right, here's the gameplay trailer. So hopefully that gave you guys a little more context as to uh, what we're going to be uh, talking through today. Um, to give you guys a kind of high level uh, overview of what we're going to be covering, um, we're going to be walking you through uh, Houdini and, and basically how we use to generate uh, the level art for our isometric grid-based game. Um, and we used uh, Unreal Engine, um, but this technique, uh, obviously you could could totally do it in Unity or any other um, game engine that you might be using for your own particular projects. Um, we're going to be covering uh, basically how to automatically export 3D grid data from Unreal and importing it into, into Houdini and uh, generating our fully realized uh, procedural modeling uh, assets uh, there and uh, using uh, a very straightforward and simple technique. Um, to give you guys a little more background about myself as a Houdini user, uh, I'm, I'm pretty new to Houdini. Um, this is actually the first project that uh, we've ever shipped uh, using Houdini. Uh, so I think uh, for those of you that might be watching that are that are new or might be wanting to use Houdini for your own projects, I think that this might be a, a good video for you to watch. And I, I'm hoping that um, uh, you'll see that the takeaway here is this is a very simple and straightforward technique, like a lot of things you can do in Houdini. It's super, super powerful super flexible and, and even if you're a, more of a, an advanced user I hope you, uh, you take away some some new uh, techniques and and, uh, and learnings from this uh, this talk as well 
to go into um, a little bit of like pre-production that we did and some project specific challenges on the right here is some concept art that um, our, our director Max uh, made featuring um, our, uh, our desert world. Um, so one of the, the really uh, important aspects that we wanted, um, a lot of grid-based games, for example, obviously like Qbert was made in the 80s, so they didn't have <laughs> 3D models. Um, but um, one thing that we really wanted, we wanted the world to feel connected and cohesive. So we really wanted details to flow from one uh, grid to another. If you can kind of see these dark um, dots here, we, we use those as visual indicators to uh, communicate to the player you know, that you're on a grid and that you can hop from, from square to square. Um, and in terms of like the layout of the grid, it's, it's very mathematically simple. Every, every grid is separated by a hundred unreal units. And then up in the Y position, um, it's normally do about 50 units or multiples of that, um, depending on the, the layout for that particular level. And the kind of the, the pipeline and the workflow here is we basically wanted to let the uh, the level artists um, work in Unreal using just basic just focusing on the the level design and, and not really have to worry about the uh, any sort of uh, aesthetic look. Um, so we knew we wanted them to basically just only work in Unreal and just do their do their their level layout there. Um, and we knew that hand modeling each of these levels was not going to be feasible, um, considering how small the team we are and that we have limited resources. And I think a lot of folks can can relate to that. Um, so we knew that we were going to have to figure out a procedural approach um, based on the level artists layout uh, as needed. Um, and uh, yeah, to uh, to get into the next step of the process here, the first challenge that we had to figure out was how to get the grid data from Unreal and into Houdini. Uh, and luckily, um, Unreal has um, really great uh, Python support. So our programmer, technical director, Kyle, made a, a, a really awesome uh, script that basically any actor that you have uh, selected um, will get its, uh, its point position um, exported out. And the way it works is you basically select all of the uh, actors that you want. So we go through here, we select all of our, our, our uh, grid cubes, deselecting any ones we don't want. Um, we run that script that just loops through all the selected actors, exports uh, each one as a, a point um, or vertex, and ultimately uh, we uh, export an OBJ file containing uh, all, of those, uh, all of those vertices in one file. So, a uh, high-level overview of the process in Houdini. Um, so we basically, we export all those point positions from Unreal, and then we, from there, we recreate our basic our basic level layout in uh, in Houdini. Um, and then the, the gist of this technique is it's basically just a, basically a, a simple Boolean operation, and there's just a lot of little uh, things throughout the process. But so the first thing that we, that uh, really uh, dictates the look of the uh, the model itself is uh, we create a piece of what I call a cutter geometry, which basically is a, just a simple uh, phrase for the, the piece of geometry that cuts the other one out. Um, so we're not going to get into uh, how uh, the look development for that piece of uh, cutter geometry per se today, but if you have any questions. Um, on that, uh, particularly, I'm gonna at the end of the presentation, I'm gonna have a link to uh, my Twitter below, and any questions or thoughts or anything, feel free to reach out to me there. But uh, simply, basically, how we created the cutter geometry was we used a series of uh, point vops and and kind of manipulated a, a grid to kind of get the, the look that we that we wanted. Um, um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and then again, the whole basically gist of this technique is we're gonna since this is a grid, um, a grid system, we're going to loop through every Y position in that grid. We're going to take our piece of cutter geometry and we're just going to do a Boolean and we're going to save that piece of geo and just layer on top until we've essentially looped through all of the, all of the layers in our, in our grid to generate our final mesh. So once we have that uh, point position data uh, exported into an OBJ file from Unreal, um, we're going to start bringing that into Houdini, and we're going to break it up here into a step-by-step -step process to generate our uh, procedural geometry. So the first step 
uh, in the process is um, we're going to import that OBJ uh, that we exported from Unreal, um, and then we're going to orient it in um, Houdini properly, just using a simple transform node. Um, you can see all the points um, from our uh, exported OBJ file here in the Houdini viewport. The next uh, important step that we're going to do is we're going to take every Y position um, of every uh, point, and we're going to um, create a custom uh, attribute, just basically copying that Y position into a custom attribute called Y position. Um, and what that's going to allow us to do, we're going to get into that a little bit more later, um, but uh, since we are working with a grid system, um, you can kind of imagine um, uh, layers here. So layer one, layer two, layer three, la layer four. Um, we're going to use that um, that custom attribute Y position later to uh, basically uh, sort through every layer and and do all of our uh, our modifications there as as, as needed. So once we have that that uh, custom attribute created, um, we're just basically going to use a um, a, uh, a simple grid primitive, and then we're going to copy that grid primitive to uh, each point um, from our point data from Unreal, and then we're basically going to get essentially the same layout that we have um, in Unreal uh, represented by um, all of our, our grid squares. Um, and then the next step is um, instead of just having single-sided geometry, uh, we're going to first clean the, that up using a simple fuse node, then we're going to subdivide and extrude and bevel uh, geometry as needed to uh, ultimately get the uh, the desired look. Uh, yep, and here it is uh, basically uh, extruded and beveled and um, kind of all ready to go for the, the next step in the process. Um, you can also see here, um, you basically see um, the, uh, the Y position attribute that we made um, we're going to get into that in just a second here. Um, and then the next step in the process is we're going to, um, now that we have um, primitives and not just point positions, we're going to uh, promote that point attribute to uh, a detail attribute, um, which we're then um, going to use. Um, so once we have that, that attribute promoted, um, we're going to um, basically sort every uh, layer of our grid based on its Y position. Um, and we're going to use a uh, simple connectivity node, partition node, and name node just to kind of clean that up. Um, and here's basically our, um, yeah, looking in our um, uh, geometry spreadsheet here, you can see um, what we've done. We've basically said, oh, are you uh, are you in group one? Are you in group one because you have the same uh, Y position, yes or no? And then we basically are going to take that information and then we're going to sort it out. So every uh, every primitive is going to be basically in its own group. Uh, group one, group two, group three, group four, and so on and so forth. So once that's done, we're, we're basically all set up to get into the, the bread and butter of this technique, which is basically a uh, for each loop. So we're basically going to sort through every layer of our grid. We're going to use a for each loop, and uh, then we're going to perform our uh, Boolean operation on, on every uh, layer using our piece of uh, cutter geometry. Um, kind of see this for each loop structure here. Um, and then basically we're going to take that Y position and we're going to move the piece of cutter geometry to correspond to that Y position. So we're basically going to move it um, to the correct position for, for every grid layer. And then we're gonna just going to keep looping and doing our Boolean operations until we end up with our, uh, our end result here, which is uh, basically for each loop, all of our Boolean operations, and once, once we get down there, we're just going to do a couple more operations here. Um, we're going to do a poly reduce. We're going to just clean up the normals a bit, and we are going to do a uh, just a simple UV unwrap. To show you a little bit of uh, the piece of cutter geometry that we used, i um, going to just scrub through here. So this is just an example of, um, this is our sand world. You can kind of see these like sand outlines that we made. So again, we're basically using a for each loop where every layer we're positioning this um, this piece of geometry down and we're doing a Boolean op operation and cutting it out of every grid layer. And uh, again, 
um, the end result is basically just like this. Um, so that's the pretty straightforward and simple approach within Houdini. Um, that we're going to get into the final step, which is uh, after we basically exported um, this uh, piece of geometry as an FBX, we're then going to bring it back into Unreal. We're just going to do a simple import. Um, and basically one thing we did in, in um, our specific uh, pipeline was every grid, which basically had a, a series of uh, the collision data and also any kind of game logic on it, and then a static mesh um, just for basic prototyping within the level. And then we basically turn off the visibility or basically blow out the reference to the static mesh so there's no draw call there. And then we, um, once we have our geometry from Houdini um, imported, we basically just drag and drop it into our level, zero it out, and then that's basically it. And we're pretty much good to go from there. Um, and this is just uh, taking a look at the, uh, the piece of finished geometry in the Unreal viewport and um, yeah, that's uh, that's the basic technique, guys. Um, and uh, a couple uh, couple advantages to this technique um, that uh, we discovered along the way were obviously the first one, uh, which was really really important, and one of the main reasons that we um, we we try to go down this this path was since this uh, this game is out on on mobile. Um, draw calls are obviously a super, super important thing. So uh, if we had, you know, let's say some levels you might have two or three hundred different um, uh, grid squares in there. That's two or three hundred different draw calls. Um, and then basically, instead of baking all of that down, we basically just export the point data to uh, Houdini. We do our do our magic there, and we end up with a one or two pieces of geometry, which is going to drastically reduce the scene complexity and just uh, make for a much more um, optimized level. Um, another advantage to this technique, as opposed to uh, doing something like hand modeling, um, is we're going to have a consistent look across um, all of our levels, um, which is really great and one less thing that we have to have to worry about. Um, another thing is this technique, as I was saying before, it's super simple, um, but really powerful. It's easily modifiable and expandable. Um, some of our, our later worlds that we did um, for more recent content updates, we did a, a lot of different layering and we played with the look quite a bit and basically just layered on this uh, super straightforward and, and, uh, and simple technique. And uh, again, the, lastly, um, I think one of the great takeaways here is also how uh, simple this is to, to implement. And even if you're new to Houdini like myself, um, you know, you can kind of use this uh, really straightforward operation and you can you can uh, kind of adapt it in, into a myriad of different uh, needs. Um, so, yeah, thank you guys so much for uh, for listening to my talk on procedural um, generation for grid based games. Um, again, my name is Patrick McAvina. If you guys have any other follow up questions or anything at all, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter dot com slash pale blue motion and uh, Wanted to thank Houdini for, for letting me chat with everybody today and uh, share with everyone uh, the insides of uh, the project um, that we worked on. And uh, yeah, thanks so much. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye.